one thing at a time. If you can hear my voice, clap once. Thanks, Mary. We clapped way too many times. Good morning, boys and girls. All right, if you can hear my voice, go ahead and take a seat in your chair and have your eyes towards me. Have your eyes towards me. I'll know you're listening because your both eyes are going to be facing me. Both of them. Both eyeballs looking at me. I don't want to see one eyeball looking at me, one eyeball looking in a different direction. Both eyeballs on me. All right, if you can hear my voice, clap eight times. Sounds like a real loose applause, just a real loose smattering of applause. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We're still waiting on some of our friends to join us. Um, how are we feeling this morning? Tired, 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 tired. Is anyone still in school? Still in school? Still have school this week? Nice. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Does anyone still have classes tomorrow? Anyone going to classes tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, me. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, because I heard that a couple people are tired. Hi. Hey, I didn't know you are here today. Because um, a couple people are tired and a couple people have school in the morning, here's what we're going to do, okay? We are going to take a short power nap, okay? Yeah, yeah we're going to take a short power nap, especially because people are still filtering in, right? So we're going to take a short power nap. Here's what we're going to do. Ready? Go ahead and make sure you guys are seating. That's perfect. Get nice and comfy in your chairs. Get nice and comfy. Settle in. Where your full, both feet kind of swinging down below here. Nice and comfy. Nice and comfy. Make it nice and comfortable. Kind of lean back a little bit into the back of the chair. And then you're going to get a nice little pillow ready with your hands. Make your hands into a nice little pillow. And kind of just lean on it for a little. And then we're going to take a, a nice little snooze until I tell you guys to wake up, okay? Just have a nice little snooze, right? Just go ahead. Everyone should be sleeping. Ha hoo. And wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. How was it? Refreshing? Nice and refreshing? No? We need to do it for longer? Got it. Okay, everyone get nice and comfy again. Other side, we're going to turn our pillow over. We're getting the, here, the cold side of the pillow now. There we go, cold side of the pillow. All right, go ahead and get nice and sleepy. Get nice and drowsy. Hey, wake up! Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Three more hours? My goodness, that's like basically going to bed. All right, well, I hope that power nap was nice and refreshing for you. You guys feel good? You feel well rested? You were not even resting? Then what was the point? My goodness. Okay, well, you were staying awake the entire time? Who else was staying awake the entire time? Dang it. I have to try to make a more conducive sleep environment next time. Maybe next time everyone will bring your blankets and we all bring our pillows or just have nap time. Maybe. Isn't that what you want to do on a Sunday morning? Just sleep? Yeah, maybe. Sometimes, sometimes that's what you do on a Sunday morning. You come here, you sleep a little bit, and then you go home. That's how it goes sometimes. All right. We still have some people coming in. I think that we're going to have a pretty full day today, so I don't want to keep us for too much longer. Here's what we're going to do. In honor of it being the end of the year... Um, go ahead and stand up. Everyone go ahead and stand up for an activity we're going to do. Everyone stand up, stand up, stand up. Special activity here. Ooh. All right, go ahead and I, we're, everyone's standing for this activity. So everyone go ahead and stand up. Everyone's standing for this activity. Let's make sure everyone's standing. Everyone's ready here. So let's wiggle it out a little bit. Wiggle, get your arms ready. Wiggle your arms a little bit. Wiggle your arms. Actually, wait, did I tell you guys what we're doing yet? Did I explain the rule? Okay, here, go ahead and sit down while I explain the rules. Let's sit down for a second while I explain the rules, okay? So here's how this is going to be a game that I don't think we've actually played before, okay? This is a brand new activity that we're going to do, right? And so what we're going to do is on the count of three, what you're going to – hang on. We should – stand up for a sec. Hang on, because I'll show you. It's easier this way. Stand up for a sec. Stand up. And here, like, just get your, like, legs – wiggle out a little bit. Get your legs nice and loose. Wiggle it out, wiggle it out, wiggle it out. Everyone stand up, stand up, stand up. We gotta get, wiggle out, get our little, gotta get warmed up here. Get nice and warmed up. Get nice and warmed up, right? All right, you feeling good, feeling nice and loose? 
All right, here, sit down for a sec, sit down for a sec while I explain what we're going to do next. So explain here. Um, actually, stand back up, stand back up, stand back up, stand back up. Ah, <laughs> I've been tricking you this entire time. Go ahead, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Yeah, so when I say stand up, don't stand up. That's what you're telling them? Yeah, don't stand up. Okay, here, everyone scoot a little bit to your right. Scoot a little to your right. Uh, scoot a little to your left. Scoot a little to your left. <laughs> it's a trick. He's dead on. He's right. He's a trick. It's a trick. This is just a little something, something. Yep, I've just made you guys clean the chairs. Thank you very much for dusting the chairs off. Thank you, thank you. We won't have to do that later. All right, go ahead and stand up for real this time. We're going to do body worships. So everyone go ahead and stand up for real this time. You can go ahead and stand up. You guys can go ahead and stand up. And we're going to have body worship. Come on up. So come on up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get started, boys and girls. Stand up, stand up, stand up for real.
You guys can go ahead and have a seat. Miss Sammy and I actually met when she was your guys' age. So that's like just a fun fact for you guys. She is like now up here helping us out. How fun. All right. So I have a couple announcements. I'm back here for announcements. So pay close attention. Next week, does anyone know what day it is next Sunday? Do we think it's Christmas next Sunday? It is Christmas next Sunday. Next Sunday is December 25th. Yay, the day we celebrate that Jesus was born. And one of the, so some things are going to be a little bit different around here, right? So next week, are we going to be in this room? No, remember we talked about this last week. On Christmas Day, you guys are going to be in big church with your families, okay? So will you be here next Sunday? If you're coming to church, where are you going to go? Sanctuary for family worship. Big church, as I call it, big church. So are you going to be here next Sunday? Are you going to be over there? When is that happening? Next Sunday. Nice job. Nice job. All right. So we will not be here. So instead of doing anything special on Christmas Day for Living Hope Kids, we are going to have our Christmas parties today with your small groups. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Class parties are today. Class parties. How exciting. How exciting to have a class party. Who brought us supplies for your class party? Did anyone bring some supplies? Wow. Nice. What? You don't know if you brought anything? Mm. Maybe check with your teacher later and we'll find out. All right. And then I think I've got one last announcement for us, which is our December memory verse. Has anyone memorized the December memory verse? Anyone got it memorized? Actually? Actually? For real? You got it? No? You just raise your hand or raise your hand. Who has it? Anyone have it memorized? Ooh, Jonathan. Whoa. Actually? Do you actually? You do? You feel so confident you could, like, say it without looking at it on screen? Ooh. Wait, actually? Okay, okay. What we're going to do is we're going to have it on screen. We'll have it on screen. We'll look at it t together silently. Silently, we're going to look at it together at some point. This is the memory verse. You guys remember this? It's a Christmas-themed memory verse. All right, here, silently read the verse. Silent, takes a few minutes, silently read it. Shh. Okay, ready? We're going to say it together on the count of three. Eyes open. You can read it if you want. Say it together. Ready? One, two, three. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A lot of words in there, huh? That's a long one. But it's important because it tells us a lot of things about Jesus, who we're celebrating next week extra special, right? It tells us a lot about Jesus, so it's a really good verse to memorize. Here's what we're going to do now. Go ahead and close your eyes. Cover your eyes with your hands. And just like always, if you don't know the verse, you can kind of peek through your fingers a little bit. You know, you just keep reading it on screen. It's still going to be on screen, so you can peek through your fingers. And we're going to say it together again on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Wow, boys and girls, you guys are doing a great job memorizing it. Nice job. Still 
one more week in December. So even though we won't be here, you can keep working on memorizing this verse and learning more about Jesus and hiding that truth in your heart, which is very exciting and very important. Okay? I think that I'm all out of announcements. I think. So here's what we're going to do. I forgot to do this earlier. But we're going to have Miss April come up, and Miss April's going to pray for us before we watch our Christmas video, okay? So everyone go ahead and get ready for prayer. Get ready for prayer. No, we're matching. Hello. Here you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the Sunday and for everyone gathered here in this room. Um, I just pray that you'll open up our hearts to receive your message today, spoken by Miss Rachel, um, and that we remember the true reason we celebrate Christmas is to celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus, um, who gave himself up for us so that we could have a relationship with you. Um, and I just pray that this message will fill us with joy and thanksgiving um, throughout the season. Uh, we love you, and in your son's precious name we pray. Amen. came to see Ma Mary. She was doing laundry, and then the angel just appeared, and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, Mary, you're going to have, like, I can't, I can't say again. Mary, you're going to have a baby. I, you're going to have a baby, and you will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not going to have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager. I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. <laughs> uh, I don't know. A camel. Oh, yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. And the keeper said, we have no rooms, literally no rooms. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place in here in Bethlehem hand that, that you can stay, stay is a staple. And then he just pointed the way and they followed. When the shepherds were taking care of the sheep, and then they saw angels. The angel said, a new baby is getting born, who is king of the Jews. The angel were singing. Glorious. And then the shepherds said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes, maybe have to camp out at night. And then the wise men heard about it. And then a star appeared. Well, we should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers, <laughs> and some wipes, and some milk, <laughs> some shoes, some Jordans. Gold, Frank, and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room was very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's gonna be our best friend. I love you, and you're the best baby I ever seen. There, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> the new baby is gonna change the world.
Thank you. Uh, can we turn on the light left? Oh, no, no, other way. Yeah. The left one, yeah. Mm, it's okay. It's fine. All righty. Good morning, everybody. Everyone say Merry Christmas. I want you to turn to someone next to you and say Merry Christmas. And then turn to the other person next to you and say Merry Christmas. Boys and girls, Merry, Merry Christmas to all of you. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm just going to get started right away. I want to get all our wiggles out because it looks like you have a lot of wiggles. So go ahead and make a T with your arms like this. And let's get all your wiggles out and wiggle your T. Get it all out. I don't want any more wiggles today. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then make a V with your arms like this. Get all your wiggles out. All your wiggles. All your wiggles. No more wiggles, please. And then we're going to put our hands together in three. Ready? One, two, three. And put your hands down to your heart. And let's pray. Let's pray. Shh. Jesus, happy, happy birthday to you. Thank you so, so much that each year in December, we get to celebrate an amazing holiday. A holiday that involves a winter break. Maybe we even go see snow, hot chocolate, gingerbread houses, even gifts. But as we celebrate Christmas each year, may we never, ever, 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 ever forget the reason why we have something to celebrate. Holy Spirit, as Miss Rachel preaches today on why we celebrate Christmas, would you fill my heart, Holy Spirit, to be able to understand and learn from your word? Because it's only from the Holy Spirit that Miss Rachel can preach your word, and it's only by the Holy Spirit's help that I can understand your word. So God, fill our hearts. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Now, I have two questions for you. Question number one is, why do we celebrate Christmas? I want you to turn to someone next to you and share. Why do we celebrate Christmas? All right, let's see. Let's see. I want someone in third grade to tell me why we celebrate Christmas. Someone in third grade. Alexander, why do we celebrate Christmas? Because it's Jesus' birth. Absolutely. Give me a raise your hand if you agree with what Alexander said. We celebrate Christmas because it's Jesus' birth. Absolutely. Is there another reason why? Is there another reason? Anyone think there's another reason why? Yeah? Arden, why do you think we celebrate Christmas? Yeah, it's Jesus' birthday. Absolutely. Who agrees with Arden that it's Jesus' birthday? That's why we celebrate Christmas. Absolutely. Okay, then, can I ask you guys a second question? But I'm going to wait until everybody is listening. I'm going to wait until everybody is listening. Because this is the question that we're going to answer today. Okay? I want you to think about. And we're not going to share this answer with our partner this time. I want you to think about on your own, sitting in your seat. This next question is, why was Jesus born? I want you to think about it in your seat. Shh, shh. I want you to think about it in your seat. Why was Jesus born? I know Christmas we celebrate Jesus' birthday, but why was Jesus born? And, and I would love a kindergartner. To answer that question. <gasps> Noah, do you want to answer that question? Yeah. We cannot have food. So she said that if Jesus wasn't born, we cannot have food. Who agrees with Noah? Absolutely. I agree. I agree. There are so many reasons. Okay, now can I have a fourth grader share? There's many, many right reasons why Jesus was born. Let me have a fourth grader share why. Jessica. Oh, 
I could have a relationship with God? Who agrees with Jessica? Absolutely. Remember, there's multiple correct answers. Okay, now I want a first grader to answer this question. Why was Jesus born? Luke. To save us from our sin. Raise your hand if you agree with Luke. Okay, awesome. Okay, now lastly, I want a second grader. Okay, a second grader to tell me another reason why you think Jesus was born. Emma. Oh, is that not your hand raised? Ellie. Ellie says Jesus was born so he could grow up. And die on the cross for our sins. Boys and girls, there are so many correct answers. And you guys hit it all in the nail. However, can we, whenever we have a question about God, whenever we're not sure, whenever we want to learn more about God, where do we turn to for answers? Fifth graders, you should all know this. Oh, beautiful. We're going to open up our Bibles to first. Timothy, I think it's chapter 1. So we're going to search the Bible for the answer. Open up. I love that Nathan is ready. Open up to 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy is like way in the end of our Bible. First Timothy chapter one. Okay. And it, it, our kindergarteners, this is your first time here with our big kids. But kindergartners, what we do is when we read God's word, we stand up. So can you go ahead and stand up for me? Go ahead and stand up. Please stand up. Thank you. I love it. Boys and girls, I just want to spend some time before we read God's word. And as you're flipping through and we're waiting, can everyone look right over here to our lovely side of the room where we have our kindergartners? And everyone say, hi, kindergartners. Our kindergartners usually leave before the message and they hear their own message. But since it's Christmas Sunday, we're going to all listen to the same message together. And we're going to read this together all in one voice. If our AVL team, yes, beautiful. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. We are reading God's word, so we are standing. We are standing. And let's get our voices ready. Ahem. <coughs> And this is what the Bible says in 1 Timothy. Remember, there are multiple answers. But today we're focusing on this reason. Let's read it together. Ready? One, two, three. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am the foremost. Go ahead and take a seat. Go ahead and take a seat. Now, all of you were correct. If it weren't for Jesus, we wouldn't be able to enjoy all these yummy foods. If it wasn't for Jesus, we would not be rescued from our sin. But the reason that I'm going to share with you today why Jesus was born is Jesus was born to rescue us from the punishment of sin, which is death, as a part of God's plan to rescue us, to save us, to be with us. You see, our Bible is split up into the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament was written a long, long, long time ago, way before Jesus was born, hundreds of years later before Jesus was born. The New Testament was written about Jesus, Jesus' life, and after Jesus. And even though... The Old Testament and the New Testament were written in different times. The Bible has one main idea. It has one central focus, and that is the story of Jesus. You see, even in the Old Testament, even though the Old Testament was written hundreds of years before Jesus, the Old Testament is all about Jesus. 
Remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about the first time in the Bible where we see God's plan. And it was in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Right after sin enters the world, God reveals what he's going to do. He reveals that he's going to bring Jesus. In the books of Isaiah and Micah, God tells them how a Savior a, who's going to be born by the king of David's family is going to come to save us. But he was specific. It says strictly in Isaiah, remember, the Old Testament was written even before Jesus. But God revealed his plan throughout the Old Testament. And many ways were through Isaiah where he, God reveals to Isaiah that Jesus will be born from a virgin. Jesus will be called Emmanuel. And then he tells another son of God, he tells another prophet, his name is Micah, that where specifically he will be born. And God tells Micah, and it's written in the Old Testament hundreds of years before Jesus, that Jesus will be born in Bethlehem. So even though the Old Testament and the New Testament were written in completely different times, are they talking about different things? No. They're talking about one thing, and it focuses on one thing, which is Jesus and the gospel. The reason why we celebrate Christmas and the reason why Jesus was born is because God plan. God had a plan. And this plan started way in the beginning in Genesis when he created all things. And because he created all things, we believe through our gospel guide that because God created all things, God rules all things. So everyone, can you guys do the hand motions with me? God rules. Rules. You see, God rules all things. He created all things, and he created all things with a purpose. Can I tell you guys what your purpose is and what my purpose is? It's super simple. Our purpose that God created us for was to just enjoy God. Yeah, just to enjoy him forever and ever. That was our purpose as humans. However, God rules, yes, but what's next in our gospel guide? We sinned. Go ahead and do this with me. We sinned. We sinned. But when sin entered the world, that separated God from humans. However, did that ruin God's plan? No. Did that ruin God's purpose for us? No. Sin entered the world and separated us from God because God is holy. He cannot be with anything that's as disgusting and as gross as sin. But that didn't change God's plan for us. Remember, Jesus was born to save us from this thing called sin. But did Jesus, did Jesus, did we bring Jesus? Did we provide Jesus? Did mom and dad provide Jesus? Who provided Jesus? God. So um, I'm going to repent before you guys. I made a total mistake. I'm looking at Charlotte because Charlotte was like, no, it's the wrong motions. God provided actually goes like this. God provided. Everyone say God provided. Charlotte, you knew this, huh? I saw you last week. And I was like, no, I'm right. No, I was wrong. So God provided, yeah. God provided Jesus for us to continue and to fulfill his plan. Because as sinners, we cannot be with God. But what is God's plan? His plan is for us to be with him. And his purpose is for us to enjoy him forever and ever and ever. But because of sin, it wasn't possible. But just for a moment. God provided a solution to this problem, this problem of this disgusting sin. And what was that solution, boys and girls? What did God provide? Jesus. Jesus lived the perfect life. Just like Ellie said, Jesus was born to live the perfect life that you and I could never live because we are sinners. Jesus was born to live a perfect life to fulfill his purpose. And what was his purpose, boys and girls? I want you to think about that. What do you think Jesus' purpose was? 
your purpose, you and me, that God has for us is to enjoy God forever. What was Jesus' purpose? Josiah. Yeah, to get rid of the punishment of sin, right? And how did he do that? How did he do that? Nixon, how did he do that? He died on the cross for our sins. So God provided and Jesus gives. Everyone go like this. One more time. Jesus gives what? What does he give? Did he give you a Christmas gift? Did he give you lots of cookies and chocolates? I want you to say it loud and proud. Jesus gives his, his life. Absolutely. Jesus gives his life for us, for you and me, as part of God's plan. Boys. You see, I know that we talk about this every Sunday. And for some of you, you can be honest. You might be thinking, Miss Rachel, you talked about this last week. Mr. Caleb talked about this another week. Why do we always talk about the gospel? Why do we always talk about the gospel guide every single Sunday? Can I tell you guys why? It's because you're a sinner. It's because I'm a sinner. And because we are sinners, we need to be reminded of this gospel not just every Sunday, not just every day, but every second of our lives. We need to remind ourselves of why we are here, and we need to remind ourselves of how we are here, and we need to remind ourselves of who we are. And all this, why we are here is because of Jesus, how we are here is because of Jesus, and who we are is because of Jesus. Jesus gives his life. He was born just to give his life for you and for me so that God's plan may continue and we can live out our purpose which is to enjoy God forever and ever and ever. Now, the last step of our gospel guide is that we respond. Everyone say, we respond. And there are so many ways that we can respond to this beautiful gospel story. This story of God's plan to save you and me from the punishment of sin. Some ways that we can respond is by sharing it with somebody else. But another way we can just respond is simply by praying to him and thanking him, singing praises to him. One way that this whole year, you guys, I don't know if you realize, but since January, we've been memorizing one Bible verse every month. That's one way that I wanted us to respond because you and I are sinners. We need to remind ourselves of the truth every moment of our lives. And one way to do that is by memorizing scripture. So in moments where you feel lonely or sad, you can think of scripture and remind yourself that God is with you. Whenever you feel afraid of what's going to happen in the future, you can turn to scripture and remind yourself that God has a plan for you. But also, when you get so busy with the fun and you start to turn a little bit self-centered, thinking that Christmas is all about the Christmas gifts, thinking that Christmas is all about the fun, we can turn to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and remind ourselves that Christmas is not about candy canes. Christmas is not about our parties, I mean, of course, it's fun and we get to celebrate, but that's not what it's about. You said it yourselves, Christmas is about Jesus' birthday. And the reason why we celebrate Jesus' birthday is because Jesus was born to rescue you from your sin, from the punishment of sin. So to finish off this Christmas message, we're going to recite Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 one more time to remind us why we celebrate Christmas. 
Are you guys ready? Get your voices ready. <coughs> I have it slightly memorized. So we're going to say it together at the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Our sus, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And he, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let's pray. And I want you to do a repeat after me prayer with me. And we're going to respond at this time to what we just heard. I know every Sunday we do a repeat after me. And you guys all repeat after me. And I love it. But today I want you to only repeat after me if you mean these words. It's okay if you don't say it. It's totally fine. I only want you to repeat after me if you really mean what you're going to say. Because God views your words as precious. And so the fact that we are talking to him, because of Jesus, he's listening. So I don't want to say a lie to God. I don't want us to say something that we don't mean to God. I only want you to repeat after me if you mean it and you want to mean it. Okay? That's pr it's okay if it's silent in here. It's okay. You can whisper it. But teachers, you too. I would ask that you only repeat this prayer if you mean it. Dear God, Thank you so much for your son, Jesus, that you sent your one and only son to be born, to live the perfect life, just to die on the cross for me. God, thank you so much. I believe it. I am thankful for it. And I want to be changed by it. Help me, God, to remember That Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my King. You are the wonderful Counselor. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. And you are Prince of Peace. I believe it. And I want to be changed by it. Help me, God, to receive your love through Jesus. And in Jesus' beautiful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. We're going to respond through worship. So everybody go ahead and stand. And let's worship our God together.
we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he and together All right, sorry about that, boys and girls. 
Do you have offerings still? You can go ahead and hold it up so people can notice, so that the offering volunteers can notice. All right, boys and girls, eyes up here, eyes up here, please. Sitting in your chairs, eyes up here. Eyes up here, sitting, bottoms on the chair, eyes over here. Everyone go ahead and sit down, sit down, sit down, eyes up front. All right, we're going to do the Lord's Prayer as a prayer of gratitude over our offering and to close out our time together before we send you guys off, okay? You guys probably have it memorized by now, but if you're newer or if you haven't been really reading or working on it, it will be on the screen. So we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. We say it every week together. Let's go ahead and say it on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespass as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. We're going to say goodbye to our online friends. Everyone say goodbye, online friends. <laughs>